Hello and welcome to the Just Interesting Podcast, episode 66. Just one six away from an appropriate number for this spookily <laughs> themed podcast, which is going to be about real life ghost stories. I think it's real life experiences of the paranormal, real life incidents of people encountering paranormal things. Yeah, or something yeah, around yeah, that. Something like or, that. Or something <laughs> chilling and creepy, S- chilling. maybe. Yes. We'll come up with something. a good title after this. We will. You, whatever title you've seen that you clicked before you clicked onto this, that'll be the title that we went with. And I apologize for my uncertainty, but isn't the afterlife uncertain? Seems appropriate to me. Anyway, before we get into those stories, uh, we will be revealing things that we learned this week, and we will be addressing our favorite comments from the past week. And after those spooky stories, I have written a spookily themed quiz for Martin and Alex to go against each other head to head for the prize of winning this season's quiz and getting the cup, the cup that is definitely on display as it always is, because it currently... Where's the cup, Martin? Where's the cup? It's a ghost. (laughs) It's a ghost cup. (laughs) For one thing, Martin, even if it was a ghost cup, it shouldn't be in your hands. Where the hell is it? I've been waiting. uh, It's in the post. It's It's in the ghost post. That's a lie. I haven't given you my address, so... I know your address. Do you? How? Yeah. Do you want me to read it out? You don't know. <laughs> Test me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I actually you actually do know my address. Hmm. I, might have sent it. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, whilst we remember whether or not we know Alex's address, <laughs> that was um, a bit spooky. Be, <laughs> we have just recorded a couple of uh, special, a little more interesting for our Patreon and YouTube. Yeah. For our Patreon supporters and YouTube members, uh, one was about the Zodiac Killer. Have they just identified finally the real person who committed the Zodiac killings? And another episode about Jaffa Cakes. But <laughs> all of our Patreon spooky. supporters and YouTube members will be able to listen to those or watch them if they want to look at our pretty faces. Uh, in the meantime, let's get stuck in to what we learned this week. Uh, Alex. So I've learned... An interesting fact this week about a a small community in the Domin- Dominican Republic. Okay, hmm. so the Gueva Doches, I believe it's pronounced, is a small community, okay. and the genetic males in this community are born with a vagina instead of a penis, and at oh. puberty, the vagina fuses into a fully functioning penis and scrotum. How? Weird is that? Well, these are people. These are real people. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! It's a small community where some males are born looking like girls and only grow penises at puberty. Um, what? And it, and this discovery has apparently led to a drug that has helped millions of people. Apparently, oh. what? Um, what? As in people going uh, gender reassignment? I would assume so. Yeah, um, that's so, incredible. So. Yeah. Oh man, I don't, I don't even know where to be. How, how have we not heard of this? Yeah, I know. I was it was so bizarre. I found out this week. Um, so Dr. Julianne Imperato McKinley from Cornell Medical College uh, yeah. in the 1970s made her way to this remote part in the, the Dominican Republic and found extraordinary reports of girls turning into boys. And she found the rumors were true, and they did lots of studies on these people, the Gueva Duches, yeah. to unravel the mystery of what was going on. And this is in the... Um, because this sounds like classic Darwinism, you know, isolated communities, even if part of a wider species, develop separately. Yeah. Is that what's happened here? I'm not sure, to be honest. Well, it is a genetic condition. So the people that are born are deficient in an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, which normally converts testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, which is a bunch of words that I'm going to pretend I know what that means. But basically, yeah, it's a genetic condition that's local only to this small community. Um, Incredible. Which is very, very odd. So I think the drug that they used to develop from this was a drug called finasteride, which is also used to treat male pattern baldness. Uh, the story just gets more and more bizarre the more I read it. <laughs> I, I guess because baldness in men is is, is triggered by testosterone. At least testosterone, isn't it? Isn't so guess, it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the drug very can true. Suppress that in some way, then. Yeah, yeah. 
True. Well, so there you, there you go. I just thought that was crazy. That that is really some people interesting. That, that know, may be I'm, too interesting, actually, Alex. You might have to leave. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're no longer part of the podcast. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> no, goodbye. Um, the thing I learned this week was probably nowhere near as interesting as that, but I thought it was amusing. Um, and it was a quotation uh, from a book written around the year 1500 in Britain, um, which I thought it's about something that you might that might sound familiar. So this is an excerpt from the book. A certain man named William Bartram, living in a village in Nottinghamshire, met a large crowd of his neighbours going off to the fields for recreation, and joined them out of good fellowship. The game they were all going to play is what some people call football. It is one in which high-spirited youths of the peasant class propel a large ball, not throwing it in the air, but rolling it along the ground, and not even striking and turning it with their hands, but using their feet. A game that is altogether detestable, and certainly of all <laughs> games, the most barbaric, low, and vile, and one that seldom ends without some injury, mishap, or other mischief to the players. <laughs> well, Who wrote so. this book? Because I <laughs> concur fully. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely agree. Yeah, that spoke to my heart. <laughs> it's, it's, this was a, a religious man. It's amazing to be so outraged by something like that, isn't it? <laughs> it's just, it's kick, kicking a ball along the ground. Outrage. I know. It's like yeah. the OG culture war here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So what, I guess what was, it, what was acceptable at that time? Throwing the ball. Apparently, using your hands uh, is yeah. acceptable. Oh, well, it's funny because like kicking I, the ball was just that's for the peasants. That's just kicking, peasants. Using, kicking, their, using their feet. feet. Oh, no. outrageous! Yeah, absolutely. But it's, wow. it's funny because I think uh, the core criticism about uh, mischief, injury, and mishap befalling the players um, rugby uses your hands, but it almost guarantees injury, mishap, or mischief. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they <laughs> haven't come across that yet, have they? Maybe yeah. they hadn't like finalized the rules, so this was a way more aggressive form of football. Maybe they pushing and shoving and oh, yeah. Almost slide thing, yeah. tackles were like know. kicking each other's shins out. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. yeah. Shin pads didn't exist presumably. So There's, no, they did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so Martin, what did uh, what did you learn this week? Well, mine's slightly related to the season that we're in, Halloween, mm. and it's um it's around the fact that you know around uh, the the US, of course, and the UK in particular, and other countries, we dress up as ghosts and ghouls and scary mm. things for halloween and had a lot of fun with that but in tokyo they have an annual tradition or well some people do of dressing up as uh, very mundane things it's called the annual mundane halloween costume party <laughs> and each year people in tokyo dress up as like really everyday boring but quite elaborate things so <laughs> so um, I'll, we'll put some some pictures on screen of some of these but yeah. there's a few that i've got here there's uh, one of someone, a woman who's dressed up as a woman who's missed the trash pickup from the trash. <laughs> so she's just there, standing there, like looking miserable, holding two trash bags. There's, oh, wow. um, there's so that, someone. Is that a costume? That's just her <laughs> holding rubbish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's but... quite a commitment because you have to go around carrying rubbish bags. Exactly. Yeah, it is. It is quite. It is quite a thing. Um, there's another one of uh, a person at a convenience store in the middle of the night. So they're literally just stood there with a with a uh, hair like a hair uh, with a hair clip in their hair and just looking at their phone, just kind of, <laughs> just kind of yeah yeah. That's just that's I mean that, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's, a little, that's just limited lazy. to being in a convenience store at midnight, is it? That's the iconic convenience store at midnight look. Exactly, hair exactly. clip in the, in the hair. Someone else has just put themselves put, dressed up as someone who is going somewhere, and they're just stood there looking like. Pretty spaced out. When you That's said this, Martin, genius, yeah. when you said this, though, I was expecting, like, I don't know, like a, a stapler or something, you know, like a piece of paper, <laughs> something that would act, yeah. be actual people costumes. Just as a thing, yeah. Not just people wearing everyday clothes, <laughs> <laughs> just pretending that they're something. Yeah, the thought in goes into the, the excuse, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I think my favorite of the ones I've seen is, is this one of a guy at the optical store, glasses shop, who's getting mistaken for staff. And he's just stood there <laughs> wearing a pair of glasses in a shirt. <laughs> nice. That's quite funny. That's actually yep, good. Yep. So, oh, wow. so, yeah. So, just a bit, a bit of fun. But I like that. I like that. It's a very deadpan sense of humor. I like it. So, is this like a big thing in 
across Tokyo, did you say? Yeah, it's in Tokyo. I don't know how big it is. Like, it seems like it's gained, at least in the media, a bit of a ten people a bit do. Of buzz. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think it might be like an event that goes on, and they're all in like a conference hall. So I'm not sure people go and do this at like local Halloween parties. It looks yeah. like it's more of a kind of an event thing. Um, but yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Pretty nice. good. And they, they all have lanyards on them saying what they are meant to be, <laughs> which is needed <laughs> in a lot of cases. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can see so, that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. There's another one of a guy who brought an umbrella, but then it stopped raining and he's just looking confused at the sky, holding an umbrella in his hand. But of course, you- the umbrella's shut. What would you go as if you could, if you went there and and participated? Um, I think a man who realizes shoelace is undone, just staring down and like, what? Staring down at my shoelace with it, one one shoelace undone. Yeah, that that would do. I think I'd go as, I'd go as man who should have received a trophy in the post, but it never arrived. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. There might be a bit of an explaining still on that one. <laughs> what about you, Robin? What are you, who are you going as? Oh, no. Man whose whites are in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing you've got to make sure with that costume is you don't have any no, whites on. White. <laughs> no, no white. That's it. Yeah. Either that or, or confused white man lost in Tokyo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if I were in Tokyo, absolutely, that would be. That's not a costume. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, you'd go to that party acting really confused, and people would be like, "Oh yeah, I get it, I get yeah, it." And you'd be I like, "No, it. someone I help it. me! I need, <laughs> I need help." Where's the I train this, station? I'm this lanyard just so people can help me. <laughs> You're taking me as a fool. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm a lost and confused white man. Please help. I don't know how I ended up in Tokyo. I didn't even get on a plane. <laughs> I went <laughs> I to London, happen. England. <laughs> I'm like a hangover part of four or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That'd be a terrible film, make that. Anyway, <laughs> let us know what you'd go as uh, to this mundane costume party. Uh, dear listeners, uh, dear watchers, tell us in YouTube comments below or tell us on Twitter. I'm at all time Robin. I'm Mart Interesting. I am Mart Interesting. And I am at just Alexing. Or better still, at J Interesting YT, the catchiest handle on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> what do you want from me that was the best i could find you're welcome to go in and change it <laughs> anyway back on to well speaking of what you think your comments and our favorite comments of the week or well, past weeks it's been a while um let's have a look gentlemen mm. well i've got a lovely comment from last week's podcast uh from Partikal, who says just discovered the podcast a few weeks ago and have been listening to you guys on my daily walks ever since. Keep it up, guys. Loving Aww. the conversations, which that was oh. a very nice comment. And there was actually so, lots of lovely comments in last week's podcast, which was very nice to see. Oh, thank um, you. And again, it's interesting to find out where people listen to these podcasts on your daily walks. Where else do people listen to their podcasts? Um, I in listen the... to podcasts while I'm doing the washing up these days. Washing yeah, up. That's, become my, yeah, washing that's up. become my... My podcast time. Yeah. Cooking yeah. dinner and washing up, that's when I listen to podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, it used to be, a lot of the time it used to be on walking to work. Walk to work. <laughs> and so there'd be a lot of time for podcasts on the train yeah. and walking. Yeah, not, not so much anymore with everyone being at home. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Well, we also spoke a little bit last week about, I don't I can't even remember how we got onto it, about chips and fries and crisps and what they're called in different countries right and apparently we we, we were like yeah you got your french fries you got your standard like oven chips and then you've got like uh fat chips what are they called steak chunky chips chips. Chunky chips. Chunky chunky chips. Chunky yeah. chips well, yeah in other countries yes yeah. steak chips is one that came up a lot with other other names for it home fries haven't heard home that one fries. apart from like that colloquial all right home fry i don't know what that means but apparently it's something that's said crinkle fries tots and hash browns from camera Strike coco mm. So there's a difference. Hash there, yeah. browns, they're a different they're, thing. They're, they're a little bit different. They're, they're a, a different, different thing. Yeah. A shoe shoestring fries came up as well instead of skinny a fries. Shoestring. Yeah. Oh, they'd be really thin. Shoestring fries. Yeah. I like that. See, but you, some of those comments talking about steak fries, they were, were they referring to that's what they call really thick chips? I think so. A steak fries. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, in my mind, a steak fries is something, when you're in Britain, if you order a steak and have fries, you have really thin, fine, fancy fries. 
Right. And you yeah. have to explicitly make sure you get chips. If like a French steak, steak frite. Yeah. So don't make yeah. that mistake. Anyone who normally orders steak fries in their home country comes to Britain and orders steak fries. You're going to get crappy little, little fries. Yeah. Well, there's another one actually from uh, Ruzy J. And <laughs> Ruzy J says, I think in Dutch, the thick chips are usually called Ambachtelijk. Ambachtelijk? Ambachtelijk. I don't know. Ruzy J, you're going to have to send in, you're going to have to send in some kind of a voice message telling us how to actually uh, pronounce that. Or Buren. 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 That's the Buren. 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 With friet or patat behind it, depending on whether you're north or south of the big rivers. Oh my gosh. So he, that's he like just chips made... <laughs> He is just unsubbed after that pronunciation. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do apologize in advance. And that's completely wrong. But then. Dutch Dutch pronunciations are not my forte. I'm going to take Sometimes. a photograph if I ever go to Holland and order chips <laughs> in my wallet. Take out a photo. I want this, please. <laughs> yeah. And apparently, sometimes oh. the thick ones are also called Belgian fries, whereas the thin ones are called French fries. Ah, so that was interesting. Belgian chips are very good. Yeah. What? Chips made. What are oh, tots? Because I've, tots. Always... Like, I've seen like, them on like. They're like small cylinders of potato. Yeah. So are like... they just like. Well, yeah, but are they like For, mashed potato that are then like shaped and yeah, fried? They're a bit more. They're a bit kind yeah. of more mashy, actually. They're kind of like a. It's not. It doesn't taste like mashed potato really because it, yeah, it's like a cylinder of like mashy mashed kind of potato, and then if you deep fried that, mm. it you're right. Yeah, like I think top. it is reconstituted. It's not cut out of a potato. Yeah, like no, it's, yeah. Not. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's a little more, a bit more fluffy on the inside. They sound good, and I've seen them in things, and they do look get your pretty tat, good. Like, like Napoleon Dynamite. Tats, yeah. Give me some of your tats. <laughs> you can get them. You can get them here. I've had them a few times in like, like burger places in London and stuff, hmm. or or around. But really, not. They're not. There are like an American, North American. Yeah, I don't yeah know, I've never Canadian. come across them eating out in Britain before. You have to look, keep an eye out. Definitely. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to respond to the one comment that mentioned my name because I wasn't in the last episode um, where you were talking about the Flannan Isles Lighthouse mystery. Oh, yes. It's a classic very good mystery. And I really enjoyed uh, you talking about it with Alex Jones from the Super Show podcast. Oh, yes. Um, but Ethan, Ethan, E P H I N, um, says, See, Robin would have known about Robert Eggers, surely. Uh, <laughs> so, firstly, Robert Eggers, I think, is the director of the film The Lighthouse. And before oh. that, the witch. He's which, watched the episode. I have. He's seen the quiz. No, I haven't. <laughs> you know so the answer the now. I, I didn't. Oh, I have to confess, <laughs> I didn't watch the quiz. So this is how it came up. I was curious about this. Uh, how it came up. It was a quiz question. It yes. was. It was a All quiz right. question. I okay. asked Martin and I asked Alex, who directed the lighthouse? Because Stupid that was question. you know, mm, a relevant th- question. Yes. It was kind of um, had. I don't think it was actually based off of the Flannan Isles mystery, but I think there was some inspiration there, perhaps. Yeah. It's, it's on. Ne- it's, it's come to Netflix like this week. It, yeah, it is on Netflix. That's a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I saw it this week anyway. Maybe it's, it's also just on our TV, I think. Yeah, Sky Movies or whatever. But um, it isn't. He, I think, he, it's him and his brother. I think wrote it. Is that right? And uh, I believe they claim so, it's based yeah. on like Greek, a Greek myth in particular, inspired. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you watch the film, the there's. Isles. If you watch the film, there's a lot of like Greek mythology in there. Um, I'm not sure if it's retelling a myth or if it's um, it has it's like it. Well, it has. Um, I don't know. It's part of the story, I guess. It's it's, it's like a prophecy that plays out in uh, the lighthouse that yes. is also in Greek mythology. Um, yeah. Anyway, yes. So Ethan, Ethan, um, I, I did know Robert Eggers directed the lighthouse. Whether or not I would have remembered what his name is. Because seeing your comment, I was like, isn't that the director of The Lighthouse? But if Alex had asked me the question directly, who mm-hmm. directed The Lighthouse? It's not a household name that I would have rolled off my tongue. <laughs> I can I can say for sure that Robert Robin isn't just saying this, because before you, you mentioned this comment, I asked you, who was Robert Eggers? Or who's Robert Eggers? And you said, isn't he the director of The Lighthouse? So yeah, I knew that. No. I knew that you knew it. <laughs> well, I know when you asked me, when you said his name, but if you, yeah. if you say who directed The Lighthouse, I probably wouldn't think of his name. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. You know what okay. I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, from that spooky story about the lighthouse to our own spooky stories, which really happened. Things that actually happened in history. And I do really like that Alex has come prepared with his decoration in the background. And if, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see he's got a little pumpkin lamp 
in the background of his spooky Ooh, yeah. purple light. Yeah, I know. I was waiting for one of you two to comment on this. No comments whatsoever so far. I was <laughs> thinking, have they just not seen it? Do I have point it down, out? Right. Sorry. No, that's okay. It's it's just a lamp. It's it's a very square pumpkin, as you can see. But, uh, <laughs> I thought as we're talking about, you know, it's it's spooky season. Any the yeah. whole month of October for me is just spooky season. Yeah. Um, I like. I I, I'm a big fan of Halloween. I, I've got to say. I like it a lot. Yeah, me too. I love settling down for these long, dark nights, getting colder. So you snuggle up with a horror film and a cup of tea and some chocolates. And then Halloween itself, you do all the traditional rituals. But we're not here to talk about that. Maybe we'll talk about it in a future <laughs> podcast. We're here to talk about spooky stories. And Martin, I'd like to know what yours is. Well, have you heard of a place called Hampton Court Palace? Yes. I have heard yes. of Hampton Court Palace. I imagine you you went on a school trip there when you are about... <laughs> seven or eight years old <laughs> with your primary school and everyone's like oh this is where king henry the eighth mm. lived yeah yeah, yeah. Like, oh great yeah. yeah his wives fantastic yeah brilliant and you learn all about his mean... wives and killing and, you know, yeah sorry and then and yes. then the next year like the people in our year got to go to legoland so what? historical that significance not... of legoland totally unjust but anyway <laughs> yeah. i'm i'm over it clearly <laughs> <laughs> just about just about <laughs> Well, unsurprisingly, I just wanted to go through some of the hauntings of Hampton Court Palace, or supposed mm -hmm. hauntings, you know, and there are quite a few of them. So I know, Robin, you said that, you know, we're all, we're all picking out individual singular ghost stories as such, but I just wanted to go through a few of the ones from Hampton Court Palace, um, mm -hmm. just because I thought that, that, was, that was quite a nice thing to do. And, um, you know, lots of people have, have, have died there as you'd expect, um, you know, during Henry's reign. Hmm. Uh, one of which, of course, is Henry's third wife, wife Jane Seymour. And she died at Hampton Court Palace from after birth. So, you know, she, get, she uh, gave birth to Prince Edward and, uh, and, then, and then she died. And uh, hmm. apparently she appears at Hampton Court Palace on the silver si silver stick stairs, that's good to say, isn't it? Um, which which these are the staircase that led up to the room that she gave birth in and then died in. Um, mm. And so apparently, on the on the anniversary of Edward's birth, she sometimes appears at this at this mm. staircase and appears to people. Um, so yeah, so she's one of them. So uh, J uh, Jane Seymour is one of the people who is meant to appear. Have um, you ever seen Seymour's spooky spirit on the silver stick stairs? Oh my god, that was, <laughs> nice. that was amazing. That's Say it again. Good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who does who does some voice uh, some voice art artistry here? You would never you would never guess. Um, yeah, Henry VIII's fifth wife, Catherine Howard, uh, she is apparently a very vocal ghost at Hampton Court Palace. Um, and by the way, all of the, all of this information is from the Hampton Court Palace official website so it's not like it's come from like third hand sources it's on the official website so they very much buy into this which is yeah. quite cool as well nice um, what was um what happened to Catherine howard in the end what, what was so her okay, one? She, she was beheaded um, oh she was yeah she was killed i think for supposedly having supposedly an having an affair wasn't it yeah, yeah. how is that um, it's killed married no what is it no divorced beheaded divorced, beheaded died divorced beheaded survived is that was the, it yeah yeah yeah. yeah, so she was she was killed in beheaded at the uh, the tower in 1542, and um, and so it, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's not written in front of me at all. I know that uh, <laughs> age 19 apparently. So there we go. Uh, <laughs> so apparently, when she was uh, arrested at Hampton Court Palace, uh, she broke through with her guards and she ran along what's known as the haunted gallery, um, screaming out for mercy. Uh, I mean, whether oh. this actually happened or not, it's, <laughs> we, do, you know, we don't know. Um, so anyway, the, the guards dragged her away and she got taken to um, to the Tower of London and she was beheaded. Mm. But apparently her ghost appears down this haunted uh, corridor, this haunted gallery, and you can hear screams from Catherine uh, down here. So she's apparently she yeah, yeah. screams throughout eternity. And so, Ooh. yeah, uh, I don't. this one I don't think is on, on a particular date, but apparently people have heard her screaming from um from this hallway mm. very creepy that's creepy yes yes 
Maybe this would have. This sounds like a great location. We could have done a, an implant. This does sound good. Yeah, we yeah. could. Have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, the, the, one of the things is that because this is all on their site. I mean, of course, they want to bring people in and they want to have some some nice yeah. uh, some nice draws to the place. But it does mean they may be open to like talking about this. I think so. I yeah. Really would so be, maybe yeah. we could. Maybe we could think, do an implant site. Yeah. yeah. I'll come yeah. down from Bonnie Scotland and do uh, Bonnie Scotland. Yeah. We'll, it could be fun. We'll have to record a. A, a classic documentary yeah yes yes yeah. i'd be up for that fantastic so the next person who is who's seen at the uh, hampton court palace is someone called sybil penn who was the wet nurse of edward the sixth and um she she nursed during the smallpox pandemic in 1562 and uh sybil unfortunately she caught smallpox and died Mm. And she was buried at uh, Hampton Church, which is close by to Hampton Court Palace. Uh-huh. And um, and in 1829, the church nearby where she was uh, buried was renovated and her tomb was disturbed. And uh, after this, shortly after 1829, when the renovations happened, stories uh, came to light about this grey lady seen walking the corridors and the State Apartments, uh, and up to the clock tower of Hampton Court Palace. Oh. And uh, and apparently there have been some noises of spinning wheels that were said to come from behind this particular wall of this Ooh. apartment. And uh, and yeah, and so um, people had heard this, and the legend has it that when this wall was removed, they, they actually came across a spinning wheel that was, that was actually discovered behind this wall. Wow. So, uh, so they heard so it, and then they... they- I heard it and they're like what the hell is this and then oh, it was behind cool. there so whether it was to do with her or not is, a, is another matter but that's that's uh that's how the story goes i and wouldn't then, i wouldn't necessarily recognize the sound of a spinning wheel <laughs> that's a spinning wheel <laughs> no, no, that's what that's a spin- yeah. <laughs> oh my god hmm. it's a spinning wheel <laughs> <laughs> uh, what could that be <laughs> oh man <laughs> I feel like that That's must a good have point. been. I feel like maybe they heard a weird noise and then they took the wall down and, like, and found wheel. And someone's like, I'd heard wheel. that spinny wheel for ages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. Oh, there's another, this one's quite interesting. Maybe not as interesting, but I'll read it anyway. So. Uh, Come here for all the not as interesting, but I'll read it anyway. <laughs> yeah, facts. exactly. We're, we're, we're going to have a bit of a balance, but it should be just <laughs> interesting, right? So, um, 1871. Two skeletons uh, in shallow graves were unearthed oh. near the during an excavation near Hampton Court Palace. Okay, and one person who was who was a resident uh, in in a house near the palace, um, she had been complaining about banging on her walls around this time. Mm. Everyone had been like, "Well, what are you talking about? You're crazy! Mm. Like, there's nothing here." And then when these two skeletons in these shallow graves were unearthed during the excavation. These disturbances stopped when the skeletons were removed. So Ooh. perhaps, perhaps these men um, who were supposedly victims of, uh, it says here, roundhead villainy during the civil wars. So that would be uh, apparently 1642 to 151. So they could have been ghosts buried nearby who had been haunting this house and banging on her wall around this time. <laughs> and then it mysteriously stopped after they were excavated and taken away. So anyway, something to think about. How and bored must they be in the afterlife? They're just <laughs> like, so just we knock on their door, knock, knock, what is it? Knock down Ginger. Knock, knock on and Ginger run. down here, knock and go run, or about a million other names throughout the country, depending on how far <laughs> north you go. What did you call it? What did you call it, Robin? I never played it. What, what would you call it? I genuinely don't know. If you knocked on someone's mm. door and ran away, you know? No. No one ever played that around what? where you were? I mean, maybe, but we didn't have a name. I didn't, I, I didn't know the name for it, what we called it. Knock and Run. Ours, ours knock was, and Run. Yeah, ours was Knock Down Ginger. Knock Down Ginger. Were I don't too. know why that, that was, nah. that's what cute. it was called. I, I'm afraid I never partook in such activities and therefore never learned the name. Never learned the name. I never did as well either, I obviously. The, I was the a further, good boy. It seems like the further north you get, the more literal it is. So you get to like Barnsley, it's just Knock Door Run. <laughs> <laughs> so very descri- it's descriptive. <laughs> it makes more sense, to be honest. That's true. Yeah. 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 When you get all the way to Inverness, it's like knock on Mr. Barnes' house and run. <laughs> and run and Mr. And Barnes run is away. like, and run Why away. does everyone knock on my door? <laughs> what are they doing? 
I don't know why he sounds like Billy <laughs> Connolly. <laughs> that was a good Billy, Billy Connolly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Impressive, impressive. Wow. That's one. That's one to ask, actually. Yeah, what do people call that in different countries? We've gone for steak fries and chips. Now let's go and what do you call it when you run up to someone's door, knock on it, and run away? This has the oh. whole potential to be in the Ooh, comments yes. next week. So oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you, if, if yeah, yeah, you could, you could be read out. Um, <laughs> but the last one I wanted to go on onto from Hampton Court Palace was uh, a CCTV footage oh. taken in two thousand and three in October. I think I, that's I exactly. think I remember this one actually. Mm. Yeah. So in October 2003, there's this this fire escape at Hampton Court Palace. And three times within one week, this fire escape opened up without anyone like without anyone there. Apart from the second time, when it opened up, and there's footage of what appears to be a skeleton figure appearing coming out of this fire escape door. And oh it's gosh. bizarre. What we'll do, we'll 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 put a link in the description. Um and Maybe perhaps we'll overlay it onto the onto the podcast if if, if we if you know if we if, if we have version, time. Yeah. But if not, we'll um we'll chuck it in the uh, in the description. And it looks like a kind of like a skeletor figure. They call it skeletor. It looks like someone in robes with like a skeleton mask on who appears at this, opens up the door, and then disappears back inside. And I mean, October two thousand and three. You could be thinking, is this some kind of Halloween mm. prank? Which it could well be. Yeah. But the security guards at Hampton Court Palace. Um, have no, still have no idea what it actually was because no one's come forward and admitted that it was a prank. So we don't know what this what this is to this day. Could it have been a ghost? Oh, freaky. Perhaps. Freaky. Could it have been someone in a uniform, in a costume? Probably. But yeah, it's not known. And usually security around these places is very tight and they know, you know, yeah. they know what's going on. I, no I one, love no you. come forward. I love your description of it earlier, and I think it's that. I think it's literally skeletal. I think Hampton Court <laughs> Palace is haunted by the ghosts of like skeletal. Jane Seymour, <laughs> Catherine Howard, some and Civil War soldiers, and Skeletor. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's what I like to believe. Uh, yes. So anyway, Hampton, if you're over in the UK um, and you want you want a little bit of a little bit of a haunting, it seems like Hampton Court Palace is. is at least one of the places to go. Yeah, it's an interesting place to go as well. Anyway, just yeah. just in general, it's it's, it's really cool um, to go there and get haunted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was really great, Martin. Thank you. Um, that was really those, great, particularly that last one with the fire escape. That really freaked me out. Yeah, yeah no, it's weird. It's weird. It's it's really bizarre CCTV footage. It's worth a watch. If it's not overlaid, then yeah, check it out. Yeah. <clears throat> so Alex, what have you got? What's your story? So I've gone for a slightly different route. I've I'm not looking at the historical example of like Hampton Court Palace and all the kind of ghost stories surrounding one particular site. Mm. I've looked at more modern stories and stories posted on the web from people's personal experiences. And this was a story I think we've spoken about before. It's like a classic Reddit story. Mm. But The one difference between this and most stories from Reddit is this person actually posted footage they took from this incident. Um, I I wonder if either of you remember this, but this was the story of the Whistler. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Martin remembers it a little Mm -hmm. bit. So this was in a Reddit thread posted six years ago now um, saying, "What, what is the creepiest thing that has ever actually happened to you? And I think this was the top comment from Bing Bong one two three four, um, legit. Who says? And I'll, I'll read it out for you. He says, "We need some creepy background music here, just just to set the tone." <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I've been waiting a long time to tell Reddit the full story of the Whistler. This story requires many details, but it is unexplainable, creepy, and a hundred percent true. I also have video evidence. When I was about eight years old, I was taking my dog for a walk through the neighborhood with my mum. It was maybe 11 p.m. We live next to a swamp slash woods area on the edge of our neighborhood in Lansing, Michigan. I remember it being very silent and slightly windy. From down in the swamp, we heard somebody whistling at us. It sounded sort of like a bird, but each whistle was different enough where the lack of consistency made it human-like. The whistle sounded higher, then lower. I can't really describe it. 
My mom had a concerned, slightly terrified look on her face and grabbed my hand and said we should go inside quickly. I didn't understand because I was too young, but seeing my mom freak out made me freak out too. After a while though, I kind of forgot about her. Two years later, I was taking my dog out again late at night. There's a large bush that could easily obscure a person behind it, just next to the front door. As I was finishing the walk, the whistling noise started again. Same pitches, same inconsistent human-like tones. As soon as I heard it, a chill went down my spine, as I remembered exactly the feeling of seeing my mum, terrified, looking down into the swamp at something I couldn't see. Maybe she couldn't either. I ran inside as fast as possible. Years went by and I thought about it less and less. I told only a handful of people and eventually it slipped, fr it slipped from my mind. So uh, a bit creepy at the moment, but nothing, nothing yeah. that creepy. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of a weird happening. It's a yeah. weird, weird happening. But the story goes on. Fast forward to last summer. I'm 24. Started dating my girl, Sarah. We moved out to South Dakota for work. For Independence Day, we decided to go to Pierre... SD, I don't know where that is. South Dakota. Um, South Dakota, oh, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> and watch the fireworks along the bank of the Missouri River. There was a free camping spot be behind a hospital where you could pitch your tent, hang out, and see the fireworks up the river. We were near the end of the campground, and there were a few people around us. As it was getting dark, the fireworks began. They were pretty far away, so the illumination they brought was very little. Thus, we had to sit right at the edge of the river to be able to see them. A huge thunderhead was moving in and a storm was imminent, so the air seemed electric and the wind was picking up. The atmosphere was eerie, to say the least. The police boats herded all the other boats off the river and had left our area to do that elsewhere. Most of the other campers walked up to the river to have a better view of the fireworks, but Sarah and I stayed back and were drinking PBR Toolboys and kicking it. I don't know what PBR Toolboys are, but... Uh, do you, do either of you know what Is that Blue Ribbon? Oh, I think that's Blue Ribbon Oh, uh, okay. Martin's Martin's is encyclopedic about. knowledge of beer comes to the fore again. So they're sitting on this river watching the fireworks. There's a, a huge storm coming in, and... Uh, and they're chill they're kicking back with some PBRs. Um yeah, it's blue. But then suddenly we heard the sound of a paddle methodically dipping into the water. We saw a figure steering a canoe about 20 meters offshore. Sarah decided to go get more beers from the car, leaving me alone to stare at this mystery person. Okay. And then, of course, they whistled at me. My entire body was frozen and covered in goosebumps. It was the exact same whistler from my childhood, more than a decade earlier. Ooh. I looked at the figure, but it was much too dark to discern who it could be. They were wearing a hat. When they were perpendicular to the shore from me, they stopped paddling, turned the canoe to face directly at me, and whistled right at me. I was so frightened I stood up and shouted at them, Who are you? They didn't say anything, just whistled a couple more times, turned the canoe 180 degrees, and paddled out of sight. What? Now, he, he goes on and says, I'm a videographer, so he had his camera sat right next to him, and as the canoe was almost out of sight, he grabs his camera and gets a shot of them whistling as they went away. So you, he's recording the fireworks, and you can hear this whistling, and he's posted really? a video of it, so we'll put this in the link in the description as well. Um, but the sound with the, the storm rolling in and the fireworks in the distance and the, the water lapping on the shore with just this eerie whistling and the, it's, it's a very yeah it's high pitched and then goes low it's like that kind of really mm, creepy yeah. whistling mm. it's not someone it's not someone jolly whistling like mm. as they're paddling yeah. away they're not going like they're yeah, not doing any yeah, of that. Yeah. It's like this very deliberate, creepy oh. whistle. Um, and just picturing yourself in that scene is just so creepy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the story goes on. Not by this commenter, but another commenter called Gashura says um, they posted that there's a, um, a legend, like an urban legend in Venezuela about a guy who's called El Silbon, which oh. translates to the Whistler. Of course it mm. is. 
who's a damned soul that warns people of their coming death. Oh, shoot. Yeah. And uh, I think the the kind of um, scary kind of rumor goes that the louder the whistle, it means the further away he is, and the quieter the whistle, the closer the whistle oh, is Oh, no, to don't you. do that. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't like that. that. That's, don't like get, that. that's getting under my skin. Don't do that. Ooh. A bit spooky, a bit spooky, but that was that's like a, a classic Reddit story, and yeah. it's made all the more creepy by the fact that he actually delivered and posted uh, yeah. video evidence. Gonna have mm-hmm. to watch that. It's a uh, it's a doozy, yeah. Um, so a bit a bit different to your story, Martin. Just uh, but uh, I thought I thought that was that's very creepy. It's kind yeah, of yeah, airs on the whole creepy pasta thing, but it does, it does. But uh, regardless. Very, very, very spooky. Mm. Ugh, yeah, yeah very gave, spooky. Me, gave me a bit of shivers. That's Ooh. a good story. That's yeah. a very good story. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> In the best possible way. <laughs> um, well, I, the story that I've got is actually something I discovered just a couple of months ago. Um, it's going back in history, so it's more like Martin's. So I'm glad we kind of bookended older ones with mm. modern one. That's nice. Yeah. Um, but a couple of months ago in August, I was on holiday and I went to a stately home um, called Hinton Ampner in Hampshire, southern England. Uh, And it's a lovely manor house with beautiful gardens. Uh, It's all Georgian, built in, I think it was 1793. And it was then remodeled and extended a lot in the late 1800s. But within view of this lovely Georgian house, less than two minutes walk away is a Tudor chapel. And around the chapel is a cemetery. And adjacent to the cemetery, in the middle of these beautiful gardens with hedgerows and flowers and pathways, is just a bare patch of ground, essentially a meadow. Just a little Mm. wild bit of grass in the middle of all this gorgeous, uh, very cultivated land. So I was curious. And I asked about why is there this patch of ground there? And apparently... This patch of ground is the site of the original house at Hinton Ampner. It was a Tudor manor built in the 1540s. And a few hundred hundred years later, in 1765, 30 years before the house that's currently standing there was built, the Ricketts family, uh, three children, uh, eight servants, moved into the old Tudor manor to rent. Hmm. And from virtually the very first night they heard the sound of doors slamming. Now, Mr. Ricketts thought this was the servants up to no good. So he had all the locks and all the doors changed and he kept the keys so that servants and prowlers couldn't go wandering through the house at night. Nonetheless, the nocturnal sound of doors slamming persisted. Then, on at least two occasions, the servants reported seeing someone in a drab coat moving around the house. And one time, the servants sitting in the kitchen saw a tall woman in a dark silk dress rush through the room. Oh, no. But on the same incident, another servant coming into the room at the same moment saw nothing. That's creepy. Yeah. Furthermore, everybody in the house, all three children, all eight servants, and Mr. and Mrs. Ricketts, heard a frequent hollow murmuring sound that seemed to possess the whole house and it wasn't the wind because it was heard even on the calmest of nights, even mm. when there wasn't a whisper of a breeze. Yeah. So after Ugh. four years, this has been going on for four years, Mr. Ricketts had to go to Jamaica to deal with the land that they owned out there. And while he was away at night, Mrs. Ricketts heard plodding footsteps approach the foot of her bed. Oh. But there was no, no one there. Oh, she cried God. for help. She her maid from the next room came through and her maid too heard footsteps and dismal groans and flutterings around the bed at night then mrs ricketts started hearing on occasion a shrill voice like a woman's voice talking right next to her and when the woman stopped talking two other voices which sounded like men's voices would respond as if they were all standing around her having a conversation But she could never distinguish the words. Wow. She was so terrified. She was so 
convinced that she was imagining things, as she didn't tell anyone about this, except for her brother, who was a captain and later an admiral in the navy. Wow. So these, it's this hundred percent. These are real people, and her brother, uh, he and a friend who was also a captain in the navy, decided to stay overnight with his sister whilst her husband was away, with pistols at the ready, convinced that there might be intruders in the house and she needed protecting. They too heard slamming doors, the footsteps of invisible people, and the dreadful groans. And they also heard the sound of a heavy object falling through the floor and fading into the earth as if it was descending into the ground. They heard that? They heard the sound of something heavy tumbling oh, fall, through the falling into the earth yeah so i guess it's the sound like a, when a roller coaster <laughs> or a car goes straight by you it's that kind of sound wow. of something heavy I passing guess. by again oh. i don't know if i'd recognize that it's a wheel <laughs> it's a spinning wheel <laughs> <laughs> it's a heavy object that's falling into the earth <laughs> oh, yeah. my oh my god oh my god yeah so after spending a few nights and then Counting all these strange sounds that they couldn't uh, explain, and with nobody else in the house that wasn't supposed to be there, the admiral, oh, the later admiral, and the captain both said, and there's written records here, they wrote it in the letters and diaries, and they're saying, this place is not fit for any human being to live in. And they told Mrs. Ricketts, get the hell out of there. Mm-hmm. Don't wow. live there. So the Ricketts family all moved out, and the Tudor Manor was abandoned. 30 years later, the house has rotted away. It's still standing, but it's barely standing. And the new owners decide to demolish it and rebuild it. When they tore the house down, they found buried under the ground floor in the lobby, a small box containing a small skull. The new owners, no. so freaked out by this and the stories that they've heard from the previous occupiers about the haunting, yeah. they decide to move the house up the hill to where it currently is so that they wouldn't be inviting the ghosts that haunted the old house into their new home. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't blame them. Don't blame them on that. Oh, man. <clears throat> wow. So, local rumour has it, this stories of, of a man and a woman and uh, a small skull being found in the ground a proof of a rumour from just a few decades earlier in the early 1700s of the previous owners, a Lord Stowell and his sister-in-law had a relationship and a, a naughty affair which produced a child. And mm. in order to cover up the affair, they killed the child mm. and buried it under the house. Hence the small, a small, skull. Hence small the skull. skull. Wow. <clears throat> There's been later explanations from about 50 years later, so in the 19th century, some people say that the skull was actually an animal skull, not a child. Although they're writing decades later. And someone else, the same people, uh, rather, in the 19th century say that when they were demolishing the old house, they found lots of secret passageways in the walls. Ah. But these are people writing in around 1840 when the house was demolished in 1790. Yeah. So um, that's still creepy on its own, though. <laughs> yeah, people at night <laughs> rushing around the servants' passageways. Mm. Um, you know. Uh, so yeah, what do you think? Ghosts or these explanations from fifty years later? <laughs> it's it's really it's difficult to tell with it being so long ago. But like, I mean, you've got the cla- like a lot of witnesses to that. You know, you've got some pretty. You would say in modern times, reliable witnesses. You've got an admiral, mm. admiral, a captain staying over and determining, you know what, no one should live here. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's pretty pretty strong. Um, very descriptive it, ideas as well. It's not just like, oh, I saw a, a white sheet coming at me. It's yeah. it's you know yeah. something falling down through the earth. That's quite. I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, no, no, no matter what something something was going on yeah. you know it's like you know these people clearly weren't making up because there were yeah so as you say so many witnesses whether it was ghosts or not i mean if that story is true 
Hmm. Well, if there's going to be a place that's haunted, <laughs> it's going to be that place. <laughs> a place where they, yeah, they had an affair and killed the kid. Yeah, tiny, Quite tiny possibly. skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or wish. I wonder who the uh, the woman floating through was. Then did, did they say? I can't remember. Did, I think the theory is that that's the sister-in-law. As the sister, okay. who, the mother of the yeah. child that was killed. Yeah. And I guess Ooh. the theory is, uh, I guess, their guilt over killing the child mm. meant that they doomed to haunt that place yeah, yeah and like i said even today it's just a abandoned meadow little patch mm. of ground that they don't Ooh. go and live yes we should visit there as well Ooh. yeah we should yes it's right <laughs> a few good places isn't it <laughs> yeah Ooh, I mean, that's, that might be... that's giving me the heebie-jeebies that's oh, good. you're good <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, thank you both for sharing your spooky stories. They definitely got me. And we would like all of you, our dear listeners and viewers, to share your spooky stories. Things that have happened to you, or good stories like I did with this house in Hampton, Hinton Ampner. Um, stories that you've discovered through going to places and meeting people. Um, share them in the comments below on YouTube or again on Twitter um, at JInterestingYT. Share those spooky stories and we shall read out our favorites mm. or as many as we can in uh, the next podcast episode. A special contributor our classic, you. Our classic Halloween special. Halloween Ooh, special. Yeah. We've, yeah. We did that before and we got, had some great responses from like people's personal paranormal stories or mm. people that they might know who's had a great ghost interaction. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be really interested to hear what people have to say. I'd love to know. Love to know. And having said all that, shall we do a spooky quiz? Let's yes. Ooh. Yes. Welcome to the quiz. And this week I've got 10 questions and a bonus question, all themed around spooky Halloween mm. type stuff. Oh, nice. So that'll be the theme. But <laughs> I'll be asking the questions, and in order to answer those questions, you need a buzzer to be picked mm. by me. What are your buzzers, gentlemen? Martin. Chris Ventura. <laughs> Oh, nice. 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 They're making a third one of those, aren't they? Ace is on the case. Like, yeah, now they're making. Are they actually? Yeah. Wow. I think they might be. Sweet. I'll Wait, watch it. Wow. 60 year old Ace Ventura. Watch. Watch. Yeah. Hmm. Alex, what's your buzzer? Well, since you posted about this on Twitter this week, Robin, I've, I've had it in my head all, all <laughs> week, and it's um, a classic Brian Butterfield diet plan. <laughs> then at the weekend, it's time for a reward. Saturday is treat day. For 24 hours, you can literally eat anything. Pizza, birthday pie, pints of cream. Anyway, it goes on. I'll play some more. That's amazing. With each we'll also put a link to that in the description too. Well, yeah. <laughs> After all the spooky stuff, it would just be a funny comedy thing. Yes. <laughs> That'd be nice to watch. Yeah. Detox. Yeah, good way to calm down and set your, set your mind at rest before you go to sleep after watching all that spooky stuff. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so question number cool. one. Fingers on buzzers, gentlemen. Are you ready? Yes. I thought we'd start nice and easy with the closest wins. Love it. What percentage of US adults believe in ghosts? Pork cylinders, potato cribs, <laughs> That was Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Talks. Believe in ghosts. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be. Oh, I reckon it's going to be quite high. I'm going to go with 45%. Okay. Martin, what's your. I was thinking bid? Possibly, possibly even higher, actually. Oh. Are they going oh. ghosts? Yeah, yeah, I reckon so. I'm going to go for 55%. <sighs> Alex is closer. Hmm. It is 46%. Oh, wow. You were well almost done. dead on oh, there. Oh, wow. That was very oh, impressive. my God. Nice. Although, Martin, you were pretty close in terms of the ratio of women to men who believe in ghosts. Oh, it okay. Is just, I think it's like 53% of US women, adult women, believe in ghosts. Yeah. But overall, 46% believe in ghosts. So that's 1-0 mm. to Alex. Interesting. Shockingly, oh, actually, no, I, won't. I was about to tell you something that's actually a question later on in the quiz, so I won't. <laughs> that's I won't quite a large, that. that must be quite a large, like, representation then, like, between, uh, like, between women and men. Like, if women are 53, men must be, what, like, 40 or? Yeah, it's just, it's just mm -hmm. below, like, 43% yeah. or 44%. Yeah. There is, it's, yeah, a surprisingly big gap. 
Um, yeah, considering. I wonder why that is. Mm. No idea. So Maybe they question, know something that we don't. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> question number two. This is a film question, so you might have to think about it. But you also, it's something you've definitely encountered in recent years because mm. it's, a, it's a bit of an urban myth, urban legend, I should say. Okay. Which 1987 comedy film oh. starring Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, and Ted Danson purportedly captured Bacon, a ghost in the background of one scene? You name it, son. Alex? It's, um, is this the one? Three Men and a Baby? It is Three Men and a Baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I, I watched that. that. I watched that a couple of years ago, actually. Was yeah. it good? Has it stood the test of time? Don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think I think it has. I think it's it's a good film. I don't remember that scene though. I think I was looking out for it, but I couldn't. I couldn't it's like see one anything. very brief shot as they move across a room, and there's yeah. uh, a ghost by a window, which is actually apparently a cardboard cutout. Cardboard cutout, wasn't it? From yeah. A, yeah, yeah, a deleted scene, right. yeah. uh, but was made into the background of that one shot. These days, they'd remove it digitally to cover the plot mm -hmm. hole. Yeah. So two nil to Alex. Going into question three. So. In 1994, a study by the University of Adelaide in Australia found a correlation between belief in the paranormal and which mental health condition? Oh, oh, I'm trying to... Oh, Martin's... <laughs> yes, Martin. Is it Alzheimer's? No. Hmm. Belief in the paranormal... I can see the logic there, actually, yeah. Um, which one was that? There was another one that was. She might be that. You name it. Sandwich casserole, chocolate quails eggs, garlic pudding. <laughs> garlic pudding. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe quite a, maybe it's not what you're looking for. Um, schizophrenia? It is schizophrenia. Ah, nice. It is ah. schizophrenia, yeah. Um, but that was a 1994 study, and there haven't been many studies since. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. so I'm not saying well, we're not saying that uh, we're not endorsing this study. Let's just say that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, this study in 1994 found that uh, belief in the paranormal was more prevalent amongst at least males with schizophrenia. So hmm. in question number four, and it's three nil to Alex, but still time for Martin to to catch up. A classic Martin maneuver, actually, to come up from behind. In Old English, what Would does... Would you agree with that, Martin? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> In Old English, what does werewolf mean? Werewolf? Where? <laughs> yes, Martin. Werewolf. I don't know, but I'm going to say um, night wolf. Okay, I'm afraid that is incorrect. No, you're half right. I won't tell you which half. <laughs> <laughs> um, werewolf. Um, coffee ruffs, hoisin crispy owl. Yes, Alex. Hmm. Um, werewolf, spirit wolf. No, but you have got. Wolf is the correct part of the word that has <laughs> yeah. uh, not changed. Okay. Yeah. Where. 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 I mean, think mm. about, it's, although we say where, it's not spelled the same way as where. So no. this is the part of the word that is truly Old English yeah. that has not continued into modern English. Um, I'll give you a clue. It's a very descriptive name of what a werewolf is. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes, Martin. Let's go for... Oh, oh no, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, giant wolf. No, okay. I'll give you one more clue, and, uh, and I'll give okay. you an answer. Yeah, yeah. Another but clue. Fingers on buzzers. Fingers on buzzers. Okay. okay, okay, okay. A werewolf, when it's not a wolf, is a <laughs> yes, Martin. Human. Human. Yes, human wolf. It's, yeah, man wolf is what it means. Oh, okay. Well, human that's wolf. different. That's a different answer. <laughs> and I was gonna I was ready with the puzzle to say man wolf. <laughs> well I'm pretty so, going to the point to Martin. So how do, you uh, do, that? do we uh, want to split the point? I think it's just the point. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, um, <laughs> you, you are correct. Technically, where was used by the old by old English speakers to refer to a man more than a woman. The word for woman was with, which became wife. 
So it's wolf. incorrect. So, it's so incorrect yeah, a female answer. wolf, a werewolf would technically, I guess, be a whiff wolf. Yes. <laughs> but we never wrote that down, thankfully. Whiff wolf. Or whiff wolf. Um, okay, cool. They use the word wear generically to mean mankind as well. So Probably should have got that sooner, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I and was... of course, I knew that as well, so I was just... Just just paying for time, really. Just just stretching out the entertainment value. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. (laughs) uh, Three one. Going into question five. Another closest wins. Okay. What percentage of U.S. adults believe in demons? Demons, man. Yeah. Demons now. I mean, surely it's yeah. I mean, surely it's quite similar to the. Okay. Yes. I'm going to go first this time, Alex. I'm going to go for sixty-five percent. Okay. Alex, what's your guess? Pasta pillows. Bom, 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 bom. Pasta pillows. <laughs> um, I think given that the ghosts are like 45%, I think mm-hmm. it's going to be higher, but not that much higher. I'm going to go for, did you say 65%? Yeah. I'll go 55%. Same, same ratio that you went on the last mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid you're both too high, but Alex is closer. It's 50%. Really, I'm surprised. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm surprised. Call yourself a Christian nation. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice round, fifty percent, and again, more women than men. Right, than demons. Interesting. In America, okay. America. Yeah. ghosts are less popular than demons, though. Apparently, marginally. Yeah. Somehow, ghosts I'm are less credible than by demons. That, so. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that's about. Question number six, and it's four one to Alex. Oof. But still, plenty of time for Martian to catch no, up. Plenty no. of time. Mm, not much. Okay. In, Forfeit now. <laughs> in neo paganism, neo paganism, oh, how many witches do you need to make a coven? My fortune cookies. Ooh. It's up to you. Discount foie gras. I think I heard Martin <laughs> first. I think I heard Ace Ventura cackling just a little sooner. Whatever. Do you need <laughs> three witches? Correct. You need yeah. at least three. You can have more, but at least three. Yes. If you have two, it's known as a working couple. (laughs) (laughs) Technically. (laughs) Modern professionals. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So that's four, two, to going into question seven. Um, What is the best selling horror novel of all time? Oh, Martin straight in there. It's got to be. No, there's could be two. No, I just want to say it's going to be the other one, isn't it? Okay. So let's let's go for. Oh, could it? I don't know Frankenstein. I well done. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's got to Alex, be what would you have gone for? I was thinking Frankenstein, but then as we were talking about it, I suddenly it popped into my head. Um, maybe The Shining could have been like Ooh. a curveball mm. one. I would have thought Stephen King would be up there with best yeah. horror novels, but I don't think he is actually. Surprisingly, hasn't hasn't topped Mary Shelley. Has not topped Mary no. Shelley. Although I would also have accepted, and it was a bit of a trick question, Dracula by Bram Stoker. Because since they both went into public domain, it's just gone nuts. And Dracula was the, other, was the track. other one. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking, yeah. They're about public domain, so <laughs> there's just like countless editions by many publishers of them. But it's one of those two, definitely. And because Frankenstein came out nearly a century before, I mean half a century before, I think that's got the edge. Good choice. Just taken up. So yeah. that's four, three. I think, mm. to Alex, going into question eight. I don't like how close this is getting. I'm usually yeah. dead and buried by this point. Fingers <laughs> on buzzers. Okay. Where did the earliest recorded story of a haunted house take place? Which country? Look for the country. Which country oh. did the earliest recorded story of a haunted house take place? <laughs> yes, Martin. No, I don't know. <laughs> but early stories I, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say Scotland oh cool okay no <laughs> it's not sorry <laughs> it's not correct um, why not yeah. Eggenham Slabs Turing to Mis- the oldest Mr. Mr. country um, I'm going to go I'm, I reckon it's going to be old I'm going to go back to Roman times Say mm, okay. Italy, not Italy, no, not from Rome. Okay, hmm. I'll give you a clue. Alex is in the right kind of you know era. Okay. <laughs> yes, Ace Ventura. Could it be then Greece? It would be Greece. Whoa! 
What? For Rachel. a bonus point, either of you, fingers on buzzers, can you give me oh. the city? Stream meat. Quiche is low. 20 cheese omelette. Athens. It was Athens. Well done. Yes. Oh, okay. Takes the lead. The main... No, you don't, get, you don't get a bonus point for that. <laughs> no, no, forget that. Quiz master said bonus point. <laughs> I said bonus point, I'm afraid. Play to the whistle. To... So that's... Um... <laughs> That is, uh, yeah. Um, although, interestingly, Alex was kind of close because it was written by a Roman. Uh, Pliny the Younger in the late first century AD was writing about the story of a Greek, ancient Greek philosopher in Athens in the first century BC mm. who had the first haunted house encounter on record. Shame I wasn't around. Yeah. So, hang on, hang on, wait. Just, just so I clarify what happened there. Yeah. I guess the right era, Robin then gave a clue... That it was the right era. Yeah, I guess that it was. It was you know. It was a Roman who did it. After you, after you guessed though, it was the, and the, then and then the, Martin got two points for no, it. No, the guessing was back open. Up, it was back a fair <laughs> game back after that. Yeah, so game you could have you could have buzzed in, Roman. You could have buzzed in, and you did buzz in. It was just Martin. I think Martin pipped it. Yeah, and with the um, with the city as well, which is basically the only city anyone time. knows in Greece. There's two more questions, Alex. You can definitely get this. Okay, so it's five four to Martin now. Somehow that's happened. Yeah, I mean you had to. Yeah, you had a poor start, but there's always a chance to get back into it. <laughs> Question number nine. Okay. He's, he, look at him. Look how eager he is. He's ready. He's ready. And a centimeter above the buzzer. Which language oh, is in. the word... He's already buzzed in, so Alex, you buzzed in. Well done. Which language is the word vampire thought to come from? Okay. Alex, do you want to give a click? I mean, you technically buzzed after I started asking the question. Yeah, but what? No, but no, you no, have to, no, do, you have to stop the okay, question there. Okay, uh, Martin. <laughs> 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 yeah. Both of you to... <laughs> No, I, I, I didn't buzz. I didn't buzz. Okay. Martin, yes. Intentionally. Martin Vampire. definitely buzzed. Vampire. Vampire. What, what language? The language, it came from Latin. No, not Latin. It didn't come from Latin. Don't be stupid. Vampire. Mm. Anything goes. Just remember, you've only got twenty. Um. Oh. Means big teeth in Latin. Sure. I'm just gonna go um, <laughs> English. I mean, no. Old English. No. No. That's what I meant. No. Uh, that is not one of the answers I'm looking for. Okay. But I appreciate your attempt. Technically, yes. Uh, vampire is the English version of the word from another language. So, mm. that, hey, I'm mm. kind of right, kind of right, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Can I have a point then? <laughs> no, I, did, I didn't announce it. Sorry. Cool. Yes, Martin. Could it be vampire? 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 French? No. Damn. I'll give you. Well, actually, I'll give Alex another guess, and then I'll give you a clue. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, could you repeat the question? Sorry, I just want to make sure I understand it. Where does the word Which come language from? is the word vampire thought to come from? So it's not to do with, like, the word itself. It's whoa, just... whoa, whoa, no, no clues here. No, I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to understand the question. It's well, the, not the actual of the vampire. Word, you know, it's where, not the... Because it's an odd <laughs> word, isn't it? It's definitely not an English word. So which language do we think it came from? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um... You name it. Sandwich casserole, chocolate quails eggs, got Sandwich casserole. <laughs> uh, um, I will go for. Casserole. Um, I I don't know what the original language is, but German. No, although we did get G it German. from German. But... Germanic. No, I'll give you a clue. You're completely right, both of you, in thinking of European languages. And you're also right in terms of thinking about the general area that um, Dracula comes from. <laughs> but don't get too bogged down to, to Transylvania. Don't get bogged yeah. down to Transylvania. <clears throat> yeah. So it was Eastern European. Eastern European language. But older. That doesn't have to be older. It's, uh, oh, right. it's not an old language. It's, it's not a, that old, is it? Living language. Yeah. You buzzed and he's still getting oh, clues. Oh. So, <laughs> oh, you can buzz in then. You can buzz in. Feel free to. Um, hmm. Like pudding, 
Fluffy Ruffs, Hoisin rough. Crispy Owl, Pastor Pill. I'm going to go for then, if that's okay. For yeah, me no, no, do, do. Okay. Yeah, Polish. Sure. Okay. What was it? Polish. No. Damn it. Yeah, that works well. well. Really, are we? Okay. Uh, is it? Oh, no, because that's too close to Transylvania. Romanian, because that's that's where that's where it is. Oddly enough, not Romanian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, one more in mind. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's loads of countries. It's up to you. <laughs> yes. Discount foie gras. This question may have been too broad. I didn't think about it. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. How many have you had each? Ukrainian. No, I see why you went for that, but no, no. Um, want one more each, or am I, have I done one more than you? I don't know. I can't even no, tell one more each. I think you both done evenly. Okay, yeah. one more each. Uh, okay, okay. My, my last guess is going to be Bulgarian. No, Alex. My last guess, um, um, Hungary. What's the language of Hungary? Hungarian. Correct. That uh, is a point. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and the comeback starts right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Oh, well done. So I would have okay. actually accepted. I, I, I thought this was an easier question than it actually turned out to be because bad writing. But uh, there are four possibilities. Scholars aren't entirely what? sure. Hungarian, Greek, Turkish, or Hebrew. Oh wow! Really? So we were, there were a lot oh, of options man. in that area. You managed to dance around them all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hungarian is one of them. So well done, Alex. That Fair takes play. it to five all. Going into Thank question you. number ten. There can now, be if I lose, I will be one. very upset. <laughs> Oof. It is. I'm afraid. Fingers on buzzers because it's the oh. closest wins. Okay. Okay. That's the the opposite very of fingers popular. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody knows and loves this film franchise uh, I've certainly watched it back to back in a marathon 20 times mm -hmm. Fast and Furious definitely Lord didn't Rings. hear about it today but the horror film franchise Witchcraft is the longest running horror film series of all time how many films are in the series closest Witchcraft oh my god mm. I've never even heard of this series I've never even heard of this series. I know. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> Started in the late crap. 80s, went through to 2016. Okay, that's and, good. Uh, well, maybe. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Um, Witchcraft. A mixture of theatrical releases and straight to video. Of course. <laughs> the long longest running horror film series of all time. In terms of number of entries, how many films are in the series? Okay, so there's got to be a lot. Um, um, okay, well, I'll, I'll have a stab in the dark then. Yeah, I mean, it is Join Mystery Meat. 1980s, 2016. If they're straight to video, I reckon they're doing quite a lot. I reckon I'm going to go 45. That served me well earlier on. It did, yep. Okay. Martin, what's your guess? <sighs> that sounds about I think, I think I think they might have done a few more. They've gone straight to DVD. I mean, one a year, that's quite a lot. But in the 80s, they were like banging out films, weren't they? <laughs> Absolutely banging out these films. They could have even done three a year. If this was like, well, imagine this like a TV, if these were like straight to video things, I imagine like episodes of TV, the quality might not have been much better. They could have done 10 per year. Like <laughs> <laughs> 52. 52. Martha's going 52. Yeah, I'm going to spread out a bit. 45. I could have done 46, but I was going to spread out a little bit. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Give them yeah, meaningful gap. Um, I'm afraid you're. You're both pretty far out, but Alex is closer. <laughs> oh, well there's okay. only 16 films oh, okay. in the series. Oh. Only 16. Although, only funny 16. enough, Martin, the last three were released in the same year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. All films at the same time. Uh, yeah. And the, the, what did you say? The witches. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. The first one was 1988. Last one was 2016. Oh, uh, the last three times. were 2016. And. It was running for so long that the lead character was has been played by ten different actors over the course yeah. of the series. Wow. Okay. I thought it was oh, going. I thought it was going to be something mental, like loads of films. Like. Yeah, not quite that crazy. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, yeah, yeah, most okay. people go for Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth, both of which have thirteen films or twelve in the uh, in their respective mm -hmm. series. But yeah, 
witchcraft beats them. Do you think? Do you think mm-hmm. they just like were tired with the lead, and then they were like, "No, we'd, let's just get three films shot in a year and release them <laughs> yeah, all, just so we can so, have yeah. this title, and people yeah. will remember us." Yeah, they will now. <laughs> actually, the uh, by the time twenty sixteen Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth, I only had I barely scraped ten, I think, or mm. um, I think Friday the Thirteenth oh, okay. just got yeah. twelve. Um, so they were still quite quite way ahead. And they took the term that most horror franchises seem to take, which is the 16th film in the franchise is a bit meta, in which the previous 15 films exist as films within the universe of the 16th <laughs> film. Did they do the classic horror movie tra- trait of when it's not like witchcraft 16 or whatever they just they just call it witchcraft at like witchcraft random. 10 or something yeah, I th- random i actually to their credit i think they stuck with it i think the roman numeral na- numbering stayed really? right through yeah wow. nice. that's, that's fair enough i respect that yeah. yeah yeah which is unusual you're right completely unusual well that mm. makes it six five to alex yes yes very well close so close <sighs> what a roller coaster of a quiz though i know I winning mad losing one. And then that hungry thing. I'm so glad to, that was. Uh, yeah, that was good. That was good. I was, I was, I was area, worrying that neither would get it, and it would be a, <laughs> a big fail. So I'm sorry. Yeah. But, uh, but well then. And uh, would you like the bonus question? Yeah. Why not? I'd love a bonus question. Yeah. Okay. Well, related to two questions that have already come up <laughs> in this quiz, it's the closest wins again. Okay. By what percentage has the amount of U.S. adults who believe in ghosts? changed since the 1970s so has it gone down by 50 percent or has it gone up by 50 percent oh yeah, as an example yeah as an yeah. example oh why this would be interesting i don't know you know if they've gone down or gone up mm. part of me thinks like you look at his, the his, history there's less like in the olden days, you'd be like, oh, there's a, a mist across the moors. That's probably a ghost. You know, the, the scientific explanations. I don't know. But with the internet, there's been so many more like ghost stories and stuff that people have mm-hmm. never heard of that they're now hearing about. Yeah. And this way, and like people faking things, people will have mm-hmm. seen something on Most Haunted or something and be like, oh, yeah, ghosts. You know what I mean? I, since, I, don't, I'm not, I don't know. Since 1970, you say? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, so chocolate quails, eggs, garlic pudding, Ooh, fluffy yes, ruffs. I'm going to go for that line of thinking. I'm going to think that the percentage has increased by 8%. Okay. Is that the right format that you wanted for that? That is the right format, Question? exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's Could 8%, it percent is, 8% increase is your. Is your I goal, think, I I think okay. so, yeah. I also think it's probably increased. And I think probably by more. I'm going to go for a 25% increase. 25% versus 8%. You're both quite far off, but Martin is closer. (laughs) It has increased by 400% since the 1970s. I think I misunderstood the the ratios. (laughs) (laughs) It has quadrupled. Belief in ghosts has quadrupled since the 1970s. And yeah, Alex, I think you explained the likely reasons for it. (laughs) It, The internet, right? Must have just... Although interestingly, um, a little study at the beginning of uh, 2021 revealed that during the pandemic and lockdowns in the West especially, uh, reports of encounters with ghosts and belief in the paranormal uh, went up. Interesting. Because wow. I guess everybody's spending all their time at home just kind yeah. of being a bit bored. Seeing things. Yeah. Taking more drugs. <laughs> I guess Taking so. Taking more yeah. drugs. So, yeah. Or just seeing ghosts. And just so. more seeing more ghosts, mate. Ghosts, ghosts will have to be, <laughs> ghosts have to stay <laughs> during the pandemic too. So they were just in the houses <laughs> as well. Well, exactly. Martin gets the moral victory for getting the bonus question correct, but Alex oh, gets the you. actual technical victory, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Which, in, according TKO. to the league table, actually puts Alex quite decisively in the lead. Yeah. I was, I, was, I was looking bad halfway through, looking good near the end, and then threw away. Well, I'm coming for that cup, mm-hmm. which you're gonna have to. You're gonna I have to will head, have at some point. <laughs> 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 Uh, well thank you all at home listening to us or watching us on youtube for joining us for this very spooky episode i was definitely freaked out by Mm -hmm. some of those stories yeah Um, Yeah. and thank you for enjoying this hopefully slightly spooky quiz 
spooky but interesting i hope and yeah. hopefully join you well hopefully you'll join us next time for your spooky stories please do send them in either in the youtube comments or on twitter at j interesting yt thank you for listening thank you for watching and we'll see you next time bye 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 <laughs>